Okay, Chris Petri here. Thank you so much for coming by. We're going to be doing another beautiful painting right here, right now. We're doing a beautiful winter scene with snow, with distant mountains and trees. We're going to do a foreground with a beautiful pine tree, some bushes, some little bit of twigs and things like that here within the snow in the foreground. We're going to cover the whole enchilada, the whole chock full of nuts information here you need for watercolor. So just stick here, keep watching. We're going to cover the whole painting, everything, as we go on this tutorial. Okay, so we'll be right back. We'll start out with our sketch first. We'll kind of cover what we need to do to sketch in our first uh, bit of information on our uh, watercolor paper here. And then we'll get right into the painting, the glazing technique, of course, we're going to use on this painting. So you learn the glazing technique, methods, and techniques. No need to worry. If you want to learn watercolors, you're in the perfect place. You're in the perfect place, the perfect time to learn watercolor here in the new year. So stick with me and we'll get started in just a second, okay? All right, we'll be right back. All right, everybody, we just saw the finished painting. Thanks so much for coming by. I really appreciate it. We're going to actually create this beautiful winter scene. We're going to create some mountains in the background. We're going to create a beautiful pine tree here on the right and some bushes and little twigs and things like that. Some little happy twigs and happy bushes along here in the foreground with a pine tree and then with the distant mountains here. You can take your time, hit pause right now, draw this sketch out as you need to. But basically you just saw the finished painting so you know what it's going to look like from the start. Then all you need to do now is get your pencil drawing in, which we did here. And you can see how it all looks. It's really quite simple. You have a, a horizon line going across here, which is your snow, all the way across here like so. Then you have some mountains up here on the right. Uh, on the left, you have some mountains on the right. You have a snow, bit of snow here, just in the, in the distance here for the horizon line. And then you have a, a pine tree here with all your pine tree branches like this, and you have some bushes and weeds and things like that in the foreground. So you're basically creating a beautiful foreground with some weeds and bushes and grasses and things like this, right? Then you have a foreground pine tree here. That's in the foreground here, closest to us. And then in the distance, out far beyond, out far, that's your distant mountains with trees forests, snow, more forests and trees out here. So just think of it as you're trying to create a mood and a feeling here of distant trees and mountains and snow, um, snowy uh, hills and fields, and then your foreground here with the tree and some weeds and bushes in the foreground. That's all you have to remember. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to do our washes next. We'll cover the whole enchilada, everything you need to learn about this video and about this technique of using the glazing technique, which is light washes first. And then over the top of that, we're going to do our darker washes, which are the trees over here and the pine tree over here and the weeds and the bushes here. So let's get started. But now that you have the pencil sketch all ready to go and let's hit pause if you have to. So remember, you can always hit pause on your video and get this sketch done. Once you get this sketch done, you're ready to paint. So we're ready to paint. I'm ready to paint. Let's get started. But let's get the sketch done first. Get that done right now. Get that completed. Hurry up. Hurry up. Get it done. And then we're going to start our painting right in a second or two. Okay. All right. And I'm taking a break too. Yes. I'm taking breaks all the time. Whenever I do a sketch, I take a break and then I come in and do my painting and start out and do my first wash. And we're doing again the glazing technique. So this is easy. Get your sketch done. You get to take a break. Then you come in and you do your first wash. That's your glazing technique. You get to take another break after that. Can you believe it? All right. So you're going to see how I'm going to do it. I'm going to take a break right after I do my first wash. All right. So let's come back in just a second. I'll show you what I mean. All right, everybody. Hey, we're getting started. And again, I'm using Arches paper, orange cover, 
So this is Arches Rough, 300 gram, 140 pound. So this is uh, the, the beauty of Arches paper is if you're going to look up Arches paper online and you're going to order online, or even if you're going to go to your local art supply store, all you have to do is look for the orange cover. The orange cover, cover will show you the proper paper you're going to need here for this painting, which is rough paper. Arches, 300 gram, 140 pound. Um, it's going to be um, uh, rough paper, white paper, and uh, it's actually uh, cold press. So this is cold press paper. Look for the orange cover, that's all you need to know. Anything you buy with an orange cover with ar arches, you're all set. And then we're going to use just some simple um, Princeton Art and Brush Company brushes here. These two brushes, two uh, flat brushes. And then we're going to use our brush that comes with our set here, which is the uh, Prang Oval 16 set. So if you're just starting out here and you're kind of like beginning with watercolors, all you need to know is you can pick up an Arches, uh, or actually an old Prang Oval 16 set, semi-moist watercolor set, which is this set here, which is the same as this. And then you pick up a um, Princeton Art and Brush Company watercolor brush set, which is synthetic brushes, maybe $10 and you get like five, six brushes. So you'll be all set with your brushes and your paints. And then all you need is your paper after that. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna do some beautiful washes here. Let's do our orange, orange and red, orange and red. So you see that we're doing orange and red. I'm taking water orange and red here in my palette and I'm going to take my water and do some water across the sky like so wet the paper take the paper wet put some wet some water on there some fresh clean water like that right then you pick up some red and orange that you just mixed up in your palette Work it on down, orange. And then a little bit of red and orange in the foreground, just a little bit like that. And that you should be good. You could take some paper towels or tissues and blot up a little bit of paint along the snow area here. Like that. Good. Then you go in and get some blue. Water down your blue quite a bit. Just you want a little bit of blue. Lots of water, just a little bit of blue. And you get some blue on there. Just like that. Perfect. So that's all we need to do. Orange and red up top for the sky. And then a little bit of blue on the snow area here. And you're all set. Let that dry 100% and then we'll come back and we'll do the darks over the top of this. And you'll have a beautiful winter scene before you know it, okay? So this is the key to glazing technique. Glazing technique is nothing more than getting your first wash on, which is a lighter wash. And you just take that wash, get it onto the paper the whole way. And then once you're done with that, you're all set. You let that dry 100% and then you come back and do your darks over the top. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So let's take another break. I might use a blow dryer right now to blow dry off all this paper here to dry it off nicely. You can let it dry for one or two or three hours, however long it takes, until you feel it's 
dry enough and then you can go back in and do your darker darks over the top of this. But I'm going to use the blow dryer so I can keep working here. So as a watercolor artist on YouTube, I'm trying to like, you know, maximize my time. So I'll use a blow dryer and I'll actually dry this all complete 100% within five minutes with a blow dryer. If you don't want to blow dry it and you want to wait, you can wait, you know, a couple hours. It should be dry by a couple hours of time. And then you can go back in and do your darker darks over the top. Okay, so it's either, it's your choice. You're the artist. You either choose to use a blow dryer to dry it off quicker. You can get back in and work faster. Or if you want to take a little more time and let your paint kind of like beautifully settle into your paper, that's probably the better way to go, especially if you're going to be painting for like gallery showings or if you're in com competitions or if you're creating a painting for someone who's hired you to do a painting and you're, you know, you're an artist and you're trying to do the best possible job you can, you'd want to let this dry naturally for a couple hours and then go back in. But if you're just kind of like learning and you're just starting out as a watercolor artist, you don't really mind so much. You're just going to get in there. Let's use a blow dryer, blow it off, you know, blow dry this whole thing off quick. Within five, 10 minutes, it'll all be dry and you can go back in and do your darkest darks, which we're going to do, you know, in the next couple minutes or so. So I'm going to take a break. I'm going to shut up and stop talking and then we'll get started in just a second. After we blow dry this and get it all dry, we'll do our uh, darkest darks, which will give us our glazing technique to a la perfection. Okay, we'll be right back. All right, so we just let the first glazing, the first wash, completely dry, 100%. This paper might be a touch damp, but it's really pretty much dry for the most part on, on the uh, top portion of the paper. So the top portion of the paper is all dry. Underneath it might be a touch damp, but that's not a big deal. As long as your top portion of your paper is dry, you're all set and you're ready to go for your second wash, your second glazing. So let's do that. Let's get uh, started here. And um, I'm going to basically use my round brush that came with the Oval Prang 16 set. And we'll start working in our mountains and trees in the distance, as well as our pine tree in the front um, portion, our foreground. And as well as our bushes and little uh, twigs and things like that in the foreground here to give us an overall beautiful uh, scene here. So we're going to basically take some black and brown and red. So black, brown, and red, and some green, and we're just going to mix that dark, really super dark, dark, and we're going to start creating our mountains in the background. So basically I take my brush that came with my Prang Oval 16 set, and I'm basically going to take it and, you know, use it as like a fun brush that it is, and sort of, you know, kind of create some nice distant trees and, and things like that in the mountains here, the distant trees and mountains. And you can see I'm kind of just using the brush here like this and just like kind of lifting up like this and then some So you can make some distant trees like this and just kind of put in some happy tree shapes like this, you know, like this. Like that. And then you come down here and then this is the field. So you're going to want to see through this field so as if you can walk right through the scene. Let's not block off our viewers that are going to be looking at our painting and not let them kind of walk through the scene. We want them to kind of, uh, you know, kind of walk through the scene. So there we scrub on some more dark darks. And then we'll do some more tree shapes like this. Get your tree shapes in like so, like this, you know. Like that, perfect. 
then I add some green to that black. And this is more of our pine tree here. So this is the pine tree. Pine trees are the branches kind of are level. They kind of go out like this. Like this. Okay, so that's our pine tree. Let your pine tree have a happy time being right here in the foreground. Black, green, red, black, green, red. Nice, beautiful, dark, dark. And this is your pine tree. You just kind of scrub it in there like so. Like that. That's your pine tree. Get it scrubbed in there. Pretty much the branches are straight across like this. Like this, right? And a couple of the branches go upwards like this. Like a happy smile face. But a lot of them are kind of like this. And like this, like that. That's your the bottom. Like that. There you go. Pine tree in the foreground right here. Then we're going to have some more green, black, red. A mixture and we're going to do some... We're doing everything with this Prang Oval 16 round brush which has a good point. And you just take it and you flip up your bushes and your twigs and things like that, like so. Scrub around. You're having a good time. You're not worrying about details. You're just having a good time with your painting. You scrub around. You splash a little bit. I'll do a couple splashes over here. Like that. Same over here. Okay. A couple of splashes there. You can even do a little bit of finger painting, like so. Like that. Okay, and then a little bit of splashing. Okay, and that's it. You are good to go. Look at that. So you have distant trees over here. You could even add some purple. Some purple to that distant trees over there. You can lift up a little bit of paint, a little bit of that purple paint, like so. You can do a couple of finger scratches for your pine tree, like this. Nail scratches, you can take your nail, do a couple of nail scratches, like so. Take a little bit of green, mix that green in with that black, and then maybe add some water and do some, you know, a little bit of green in there. A little bit of green color, like for the pine tree. A little bit of finger painting, like that. And that looks fantastic. You have a beautiful winter scene. Snow, beautiful sky wash. The only thing I could think of, maybe we could do, make it a little more exciting. We dump out our uh, muddy water, because we've been working with a lot of muddy water using all these darker darks here. Get your, get your 
uh, water container, clean it out, get some fresh clean water in there. And then you can do maybe a, like a sunrise or a sunset. So what I'll do is I'll just take this area here and I'll just add in a little bit of fresh clean water and I'll just make a sun set or sunrise, it doesn't matter. Wet the paper and then take fresh clean tissue and blot that up. Look at that. Ooh, that looks good. Add a little more clean water. One more time. Do a little more swirling here. We're doing a sunset or a sunrise. Let that, the clean water, you got to use clean, fresh, clean water though. You can't use muddy water. Remember, you got to change your water out of your uh, water container at this point to get this effect, but you, you add a little bit of fresh, clean water on top of that reddish orange sky. Then you take a fresh, clean piece of tissue and press it down and lift it up. There you go. Look at that. And that's your bit of sunset. And you can add a little bit of red in there. Like that. Do like that. And that looks great. You have a little bit of that bright sunlight in the distance. A little bit of yellow paint. You can maybe add a little bit of yellow paint there. Okay, so we we just created a beautiful winter scene, snow. So we have snowy fields, we have distant trees, we have a beautiful foreground pine tree here, all created with our Prang Oval 16 stock brush that comes with our set right here. It comes in our set just like this. So if you have your Prang Oval 16 set and you have your round brush that comes with your set, you're ready to do a painting just like this. You know, we have some beautiful colors here. We have some oranges and reds for the sky, some blues for the snow, and then some black and green and red just to give a mix of darker darks for our gorgeous pine tree here in the foreground. A little bit of finger scratching to do some branches. And you have it. You have a beautiful winter scene, okay? So let's get excited. You can do a beautiful snowy winter scene just like this basically within you know half an hour 45 minutes to an hour you'll have everything all complete and uh, it's an enjoyable composition to do so let's uh continue on and i always mention if you haven't been here before this is your first time here please subscribe on the right hand side below this you know will just mean that you'll be connected to me you'll be able to follow my ch channel week after week, month after month, and year after year, because if you're interested in learning watercolor, everything here I do on my channel is watercolor, whether we're doing winter scenes like this, or flowers, or beautiful landscape scenes, or city scenes, or we're doing still life with fruits, and vases, and coffee cups, and teacups, or whether we're doing portraits, or figure painting. We do it all here, watercolor, on my channel. So if you stick here, Hit thumbs up too if you like this video. I'm not sure if you like my videos, but I'm hoping you'll click the thumbs up for this video if you like this winter scene. And uh, we're gonna create tons more videos just like this for you so you can learn watercolor, okay? So happy painting everybody, enjoy the watercolor journey. We'll see you on the next video very, very soon within the next couple days or so. And uh, we'll see you then, bye-bye.